students, welcome to TSAT classes. Welcome to the series on TSPSC Group 1 Mains Examination. As part of the series, we have started the governance and public policy classes. As part of the public policy classes, we have already seen few questions and decoded the answers for them. Today, in this class, let me decode further and explain few more questions related to governance and public policy. Let us see the next question. Let us see the question. The question is very important. What is authority and how important it is for a bureaucrat to be neutral in administration? If you look at this chapter 5, if I am not wrong, yes, chapter 5. As part of this ethics and values of administration, there is something called neutrality of civil servants and committed bureaucracy and political and civil servant relationships. This is very, very important. As part of this neutrality of civil servant and committed bureaucracy, this question is asked. See, whenever we talk about bureaucracy, whenever we discuss about bureaucracy, we have one person in our mind and he is Max Weber. Max Weber, who is a German philosopher, Max Weber, who is a German philosopher, gave this theory called bureaucracy. He is a person who developed this bureaucratic theory of organization. According to Max Weber, he says that bureaucracy is very important for the development of the nation. Now, what is the definition of bureaucracy according to Max Weber? Max Weber also defines authority. Max Weber also discusses about neutrality. So, what is bureaucracy according to Max Weber? He says that bureaucracy does not have bureaucracy does not have a proper definition. It is a very simple thing. It says that according to bureaucracy B U R E A U bureau and cracy. Cracy means the rule the way of governance, the way of administration and bureau means your table, your desk. According to Max Weber, bureaucracy is nothing but the way of governance, the way of governance performed by the person, performed by the person, the way of governance performed by the person who is opposite to your table it is called bureaucracy. Bureaucracy is nothing but the way of governance performed by a person who is sitting opposite to your table is called bureaucracy. Now, the question in front of Max Weber was what makes people follow the rulers. What is the reason why the people follow rulers is a question mark. Then while decoding this question, Max Weber develops the theory of authority. He says that authority includes a domination plus a decision making. He says that Authority includes your domination and decision making, domination and decision making. According to Max Weber, there are three types of authorities. The first one is called charismatic authority, right? The second one is called traditional authority and finally, the third one is called your legal authority. 
your legal authority. So there are three types of authorities which are in the world. He says the first one is called charismatic authority, traditional authority and we have legal authority. What is a charismatic authority? In charismatic authority, in charismatic authority, people follow the ruler because the people believe that that person has supernatural powers, that person has some extraordinary things, that person is beyond a common human being, that particular person has knowledge and can do anything. So, people started following this particular charismatic person believing that he can do something for us, he can do something for the society, believing that he has supernatural powers. We have used charismatic leaders in the world and in India. Adolf Hitler is a charismatic leader. We have Mahatma Gandhi who is a charismatic leader. We have Indira Gandhi who is a charismatic leader. We have Narendra Modi who is a charismatic leader. We have CM KCR who is a charismatic leader. So, people start believing that person because of their charisma, because people think that they have supernatural powers. But according to Max Weber, charismatic leadership is not permanent, is not permanent. Why? People lose faith, people stop believing that charismatic leader when they realize that that person do not have the supernatural powers. It all depends upon that particular person who has his charisma. But if people start knowing that no, that person do not have that supernatural powers and if that person is not capable of doing nothing, in that case people stop believing that person. So, the reason Max Weber says charismatic authority is not permanent. The second traditional that uh, the second authority according to Max Weber is called traditional authority. Now, what is traditional authority? Here people start believing the other person because of the faith, the superstitions, the respect the respect over the beliefs, the respect over the traditions. People start, people start following the other person because of the respect they have for them, only because of respect. For example, your parents. Parents show traditional authority over children. Children follow parents because for giving respect, traditional authority, Babas. You have this Babas who possess the traditional authority. Because only that you believe in the moral values, only that you believe in superstitious, you started accepting the traditional authority. Now, one more point you should understand here is. According to Max Weber, even traditional authority is also not permanent. Why? See, both charismatic and traditional authority do not go with rationality, do not go with rationality, they go with superstitions, they go with beliefs. But what society needs is rationality, the research based, 
it is a rationality which is important. Now, what is this third type of the authority? According to Max Weber, is a legal authority. Now, what is this legal authority? According to Max Weber, people start believing the other person because that person perform his duties according to the rules and regulations according to the rules and regulations the person who is following these rules and regulations may be temporary but the rules and regulations are permanent and so the reason max weber call the legal authority as permanent authority. Entire bureaucratic theory is based on rules and regulations only. You have the president, you have the prime minister, you have the CM, you have ministers, you have bureaucrats, IAS officers, anyone, everyone in India and in the world, they perform their duties as per the rules and regulations. So, this is the first part of the question. It says what is authority and how important it is for the bureaucrat to be neutral in administration. See neutrality, what is the meaning of neutrality? Neutrality of civil servants. Neutrality is being neutral, very, very neutral. You are not thinking, you are not taking sides, you are just maintaining status quo just to status quo position. According to Max Weber, civil servant neutrality is a key feature of bureaucracy. Why? He says that there are two types of neutralities. Before looking at what are these type of neutralities, let us understand this. See, so, civil servants are part of this general executive and there is something called political executive. Who are part of general executive? Bureaucrats. And who are part of the political executive? Your council of ministers. Council of ministers. The role of the political executive is to policy formulation. And the role of the bureaucrats is the policy implementation. Now, very, very important, ma. General executive are permanent, whereas political executive are temporary. The permanent is a temporary. Okay. Now, you are part of the civil servant, and you will be part of the civil servants. For a civil servant, neutrality is very, very important. Max Weber talks about two types of neutralities. There are two types of neutrality according to Max Weber. The first one is called political neutrality and the second one is called value neutrality. The first one is called your political neutrality. And the second one is called your value neutrality. Now, what is political neutrality? Max Weber says every bureaucrat should be politically neutral. Why? He says that politicians are temporary people. They go and come every five years or whatever it may be. In India, five years. But as a bureaucrat, you are permanent. As a permanent person, you will be seeing or you will be in the service for 35, 40 years. In this 35, 40 years, you as a bureaucrat will see that administration of multiple political parties and every political party has a different ideology. Every political party has a different ideology. And that ideology should not be a problem for you, should not be a problem for you. You should not take the sides of a politician 
according to Max Weber, he says that in democracy, political executive is temporary, but your bureaucracy is permanent. So, the reason ideologically a bureaucrat should be neutral, should be neutral. He says that politicians are very, very important. See, politicians do not have te technical knowledge. They do not have technical knowledge. So, it is the duty of the bureaucrat, it is a duty of the bureaucrat to provide impartial, 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 unbiased suggestions to the political executive, to the political executive. See, they, you, you are in service for 20, 30 years and three, four parties comes into service. If there is X party who has a different ideology, if there is a Y party, there is a different ideology. So, you should not take the sides. As a permanent member, you have to be politically neutral. A bureaucrat should work behind the curtain. But is this happening? No, it is not happening. Why? Why this is not happening? Because we have something called yes minister model. This is not easy. So, being politically neutral is very, very tough. What is the meaning of this political neutrality? According to Max Weber, he says that every politician must be neutral, politically neutral, ideologically neutral. He should not take the sides. He says that politicians do not have the technical knowledge. So, it is a duty of the bureaucrat to provide impartial, unbiased suggestions. This is also called committed bureaucracy. This is also called committed bureaucracy, committed bureaucracy. The next neutrality principle of Max Weber is value neutral. So, this is very, very important. Now, what according to Max Weber is, what is the meaning of value neutral? He says that every bureaucrat should be, should be seen as an instrument. A bureaucrat is nothing but a, is an instrument. They are not concerned with, they are not concerned with, they are not concerned with morals and values, values, empathy, morals. Then what they are concerned with? They are only concerned with rules and regulations. They are only concerned with rules and regulations. Very, very important. And let me also tell you, he says that, it is a political executive who are concerned with these values while framing a policy. In the, at the course of the policy formulation, it is a political executive which is concerned with the values. But it is not the bureaucrats who are concerned with the values. They are only concerned with the rules and regulations. So, they have to be value, value neutrality. Bureaucrats, uh, Max Weber, defines this value neutrality by saying bureaucrats as instruments. This is an instrument in my hand which I am using to write. So, I being a political executive, bureaucracy is this pen. This is a instrument. So, the bureaucracy is an instrument. That is what Max Weber says. He says that all the consequences, all the consequences of that policy, either good or bad, should be or will be left to the political executive. Demonetization is there. You have to implement demonetization. We are not concerned with not to implement the demonetization as a bureaucrat. What are the consequences of demonetization? The political party will face it, not you, is what our Max Weber says. So, Max Weber talks about authority three types of authorities. He also discuss about the neutrality, two types of neutrality, that is your political neutrality and your value neutrality, both are very, very important. Then he, is, he, he discuss about the values, the empathy should be there with the political executive, not the general executive. So, this is the answer for this particular question which we have for this particular question which we have. 
let us see one more question let us see one more question the question is what are the legal provisions linked to directive principles of state policy directive principles of state policy see directive principles of state policy what are the legal principles what are the laws i will give you the list of laws which are linked to dpsps okay but let us see the introduction part what you need to write the directive principles of state policies are discussed in part 4 of the constitution from article 36 to 51 and dpsp are inspired by irish constitution right and which is also taken into india inspired from irish constitution dpsps are also linked to instruments of instructions discussed in government of india act 1930 now what is this directive principles of state policy directive principles of state policies are the novel principles to be more specific they are philosophical principles to be followed by the state to be followed by the state state includes both legislature and executive so these are the principles to be followed by the both legislature and executive philosophical principles so directive principles of state policy has certain philosophies there are three types of philosophies which are there what are they sir gandhian philosophy socialistic philosophy and liberal philosophy or liberal thought so three types of philosophies which are there within the directive principles of state policy but the important part is very very important directive principles of state policies are not enforceable they are not enforceable directly they can be made enforceable they can be made enforceable how sir by the legislative law or an executive action executive policy so this is very very important so by the legislative law and executive action they can be made enforceable this is discussed in article 37 of the constitution what is article 37 article 37 of the constitution says dpsp are the they are the foundation they are the foundation for governance of the country they are the foundation for governance of the country see directive principles of state policy achieve social and economic justice in india social and economic justice in india directive principles are nothing but to tell you for having more clarity they are nothing but your societal norms or social morals societal morals to be followed by the state see constitution never says to reserve two seats for women in metro constitution directly never said these are the societal norms which we have adopted from directive principles of state policy so this is the introduction part then what are the legal provisions associated with dpsp what are the legal provisions let us pen down the legal provisions the first legal provision you have to discusses land reforms in india land ceiling acts we have land ceiling acts land reforms or land ceiling acts land ceiling acts these are the provisions linked to dpsp the next one we have is the minimum minimum wages act of 1948 we have uh, one more act uh, that is linked to article 39 of the indian constitution dpsp that is your equal remuneration act equal remuneration act 1976 right we have also linked uh, you have also linked your few policies like your asara pension and for women we have ksr kit uh, we have ksr kit anganwadi centers for children we have manavuru manabadi program manavuru manabadi program we have also having uh, we also have this uh, uh, other important legal provisions like seventh pay commission very very important national legal service authority act of 1987 national legal service authority act of 1987 we have maternity benefit act maternity benefit act of 1961 we have reservations 
we have reservations to SCs, STs and BCs as per article 46, right. We have yeah, right to education act, right to education act of 2009. We also have scholarships, we also have pensions, ASARA pensions, we have uh, food security act, food security act 2013, right. We have environmental protection act, environmental protection act of 1986. Let me take down the last one, we have project cheetah, recent project, project cheetah. Project Elephant, Project Tiger, we have Namami Ganga program, Namami Ganga program. See all these are the legal provisions associated with directive principles of state policy. These are very, very important. You need to pen down all the list, right. These are the legal provisions, see, legislative laws and executive policy. So this is for today with regards to governance and public policy. I'll be I will be seeing you guys again with another class on governance and public policy. Till then, keep learning, happy learning, Jai Hind.